Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2021-2022 Coleraine High School Curriculum Night. Tonight, our guidance department is going to go over some important features of the Coleraine High School curriculum and help parents and students figure out what they need for scheduling for next school year. Tonight, we have Mrs. Meredith Tillo, Mrs. Kim Bunn, Mrs. Evelyn Gibfried, and Mrs. Heather Snyder. And now Mrs. Gibfried will talk about our scheduling timeline. Thank you. All right, so as Ms. Hosley said, we are starting the process for scheduling for next school year. We will be meeting with students um, next week and we will also be working with our remote learning students the following week to ensure that everyone gets a schedule created. So here is the breakdown in the timeline for scheduling for both students and parents. So starting on February 3rd or the 10th, our students will have the opportunity to learn about electives, classes, Teachers will review course options during the Wednesday remote learning day. So that should have happened either last week or it will happen on the 10th, which would be today. Um, and then the next thing, February 11th, which is tonight, the curriculum night presentation, which is this presentation that you're listening to. And then February 12th, which is Friday, teachers must communicate with parents and students if their students are gonna be recommended for honors if they will go up a level or even down a level, teachers should be communicating that information with both students and parents so that everyone can be informed. Also, teachers will be recommending students. There was a Google sheet that was emailed out to teachers and teachers will be filling that out based listing their recommendations for students, whether they recommend them for advanced level courses, honors level courses, or AP level courses. And that information must be submitted by this Friday, February 12th. Next week, starting on Tuesday, all of us, the counselors, will be going into the classrooms, into the cohorts to meet with the in-person students uh, to review how to schedule classes and have them input their scheduling information. And then the following week, we will be working with our remote learning students to get them scheduled as well. We will have a scheduling presentation and we will have, a, instead of scheduling sheets like we've had in the past, we will be using a Google form. So we are trying to make this as technology friendly as possible, as virtual as possible, so that we can accommodate both our in-person students as well as our uh, remote learning students. Um, so as you see there, the week of the 22nd, we will go, we will work with our remote learning students and do the how-to uh, video, and then we'll schedule Zoom meetings with our students to help answer any questions. On March 11th, we will schedule another conference night and that is where parents can hop on to a Zoom call or speak with, or make an appointment with your counselor so that we can help answer any questions that you have about the scheduling process or if, we, if you believe that we've missed your student um, and they haven't scheduled, that is a good time to set up a time to meet with your counselor. So the scheduling timeline after that, so once all the students have scheduled their courses, in April, the students will receive a, a list of courses that they have requested. Remember that this is not their schedule. This is just a list of all the courses that they have requested. Um, just note if there are any changes or any information that you need to share with us, there will be a letter attached to this list and you can write down your changes or your questions on that letter because the student's counselor will review that and answer any questions that you have or make any appropriate changes that you would like. Once that happens in August, when we return back to school, we will work on schedules for students and students will have the opportunity to access those schedules through progress book. The date will be communicated as we get closer to August. And, and of course, it'll be prior to the beginning of the school year. And if you have any questions prior to that, please contact your student's counselor so that we can help answer your questions. Along with the scheduling Google Sheet that will be going out to students, students have a link to the program of studies, which is the, it's like the Bible of Coleraine High School. It has all of the information that you need to know, including graduation requirements. It includes a list of all the courses that we offer with descriptions, awards, uh, diploma with honors information. So it is a book that has all of the information that you need to help make a good decision about a schedule. I also forgot to mention that with the scheduling process, students 
will access all of the scheduling information through a Google Classroom that their, that their counselor has created. The program of studies will be in that Google Classroom as well, and it is also posted on the Coleraine High School uh, website under the guidance section. The other cool thing that we have done this year, our teachers have created Flipgrid videos, and these Flipgrid videos, would be, it's awesome to check them out because all the teachers have created videos describing their courses. So it's like a video information session of all the different courses that we have, and they are broken up by subject area. So if you have questions about what students do in Art Foundations, you can go to the Flipgrid video for that course, and the teacher that teaches that course will give you a description of that class. So it's kind of like a video of the program of studies. So you're welcome to check that out as well. Some things that we would like to highlight from the program of study, some pages that are very important. We get a lot of questions from students and parents about credits. How many credits do you need to graduate? How does grading work? How are classes weighted? That information is listed on page five. We also give out awards at the end of the year based on students' GPA and their grades, um, and that is listed on page six. Graduation requirements are listed on page seven. Any student that's interested in College Credit Plus information, that is listed under pages 10 through 12. And then we also get a lot of questions about a diploma with honors. There are certain courses that you need to take to qualify for a diploma with honors, and there are about a lot of different tracks. I believe there's about four different tracks that you could do uh, to earn a diploma with honors. The criteria is in our program of studies listed under pages 13 through 16. Any of our student athletes out there that plan to play sports in college through the NCAA, we also have information about NCAA eligibility and approved courses listed in pages 21 through 22. Uh, we also have, like I mentioned, a description of all of our courses. That takes up the majority of our program of studies, and that is listed under pages 27 through 78. And then a list of the CCP courses that we hope to offer next year are listed under pages 81 through 89. And then any questions about Butler Tech courses and programs are listed at the very back of the book under pages 90 through 126. The other cool thing that the book has are pathways to college and career goals. So if you know that you have a student that's interested in health sciences, they want to go into the healthcare um, area when they graduate from high school, we have a description of different courses that students could take to help them meet that goal. We encourage all of our students to review this just so that they can see what courses they should take in order to help them get to that career. On pages 23 through 26 in the course description book, there are 16 pathways with suggested coursework to help students select these courses. For example, anyone going into the healthcare sciences, possible courses that they could take at Coleraine High School would be genetics, anatomy, chemistry, zoology, AP biology, and calculus. Or if they're interested in a Butler Tech program, Butler Tech programs that would help with this career choice would be healthcare services, dental assisting, exercise science, health technologies, or even biomedical sciences. So that way students can, if they have questions of what classes should I take if I wanna go into this career, the book has a lot of information on that. And finally, I'm gonna to touch on a new program. It's not that new, but it is newer to our district. Naviance is an excellent program and it's a great tool to help students with college and career planning. Um, we have actually, we are creating lessons every month to help students kind of target those college and career, to, to give them college and career information. In this program, students can complete several different assessments that help them target what career they may be interested in. They can also search, use the search tools to help them just research different careers. They will also complete a resume. Um, and all of this information will be saved under Naviance for the four years that they are in Coleraine High School. Um, the cool thing about this program as well is that the students have access to the program and their counselor also has access to the program. And we can review and see all of this information, which helps when we sit down and meet with our students to discuss college and career planning. We utilize Naviance to help them make those decisions if they're unsure as to what career they want to go into. And finally, during their senior year, 
we utilize this program to help them with their college applications, as well as um, the transcript requests. And students can also search colleges on here. Um, and we utilize that again to send out transcripts and also to request letters of recommendation from teachers. Every student has an account. They can access Naviance using the Clever portal that's in their Chromebook. And now I will pass it along to Ms. Tillo. She's going to talk about recommendations. Thank you, Ms. Gibbry. So each year, the counselors use teacher recommendations to help students be placed in appropriate courses for the following school year. So a lot of factors go into teacher recommendations, including testing data, writing skills, work ethic, higher level thinking skills, meeting prerequisite requirements, and then also academic pathways and career plans. So oftentimes a student will request a course um, and then we double check that the teacher recommendation match up. If they, if they do not match up, hopefully there's been a conversation between the family, the student and the teacher, but if not, we will work to um, make sure that students are recommended for the appropriate courses for the next year. We have several different levels of courses that students can be recommended for. Um, our advanced courses are also our college prep level courses. So these courses are um, preparing students for college. Um, they uh, give students a strong knowledge base and um, prepare them for the college level curriculum at the two year or four year college level. Um, they also assist students with meeting requirements for industry credentialing through Butler Tech programs. Um, we offer a wide variety of courses across all subject areas to meet student interest and academic needs. Um, and then the majority of our college prep courses also meet NCAA eligibility standards. The next level up from our advanced courses is our honors courses. Um, so these uh, have students go more in depth and have a more rigorous experience. Um, they have an expectation for completing assignments that require higher level thinking skills. Um, they do work more independently um, in as more like a college level course and um, students have more coursework outside of the classroom. So conversations and teamwork can take place during class hours. And then our next step up would be advanced placement courses. These are created by the College Board and that is the curriculum that uh, the teachers who teach AP follow. We do offer 15 AP classes for the upcoming school year. Um, these are designed to be college level courses and they are taught as college level courses. Um, again, students have an expectation of spending more time independently outside of class. Um, and then they have students have the opportunity to earn college credit um, by taking the AP test at the end of the year. And if they score high enough, they do earn the college credit. And on the same level uh, as it's weighted the same as AP courses are our college credit plus courses. These are also college classes where students earn both high school and college credit. Um, students have the option to take these classes on our campus, on a college campus, or online, or a mix of any of those options. Um, students do have to apply to the specific college, meet admission requirements, um, and we offer on our campus classes through Cincinnati State and Sinclair. Um, and pages 81 through 89 in the program of studies go over the course offerings, CCP course offerings for our campus and Northwest High School. If you are interested in CCP, we do have an information session every year. So if you didn't miss that but are still interested, you can either set up a meeting with your um, student's guidance counselor, or there's a video that you can watch, but you'll probably still have to reach out to your counselor to um, for next steps. But here is if you click this, click this link, you can find the list of courses that are offered 
and kind of next steps for how to proceed in College Credit Plus. But reaching out to your student's counselor is really the best way to get started. And now Mrs. Bunn is going to go over the AP and Honors camps that we offer. Yes. And we are, we have in the past offered either summer homework or just recently we started AP and Honors camps. So we are going to continue that this summer. Uh, there are going to be requirements. So students going from eighth to ninth grade, if you're going into AP, Human Geography, or Honors English, you will be required to take the camp. And also, ninth grade students going into 10th grade if you are going into honors english 2 honors chemistry or honors algebra 2 you will be required to take the camp we have not set up those dates yet and we are currently in process of discussing how that will look we believe there will be a remote option um, and we are right now deciding uh, when that will be and how it will look we will get you more information as soon as the camps have been decided and same with the middle school guidance counselors will also provide information to our current eighth graders about the camps as well so for the eighth to ninth grade scheduling first off we are so excited to have our eighth graders come up and join us as ninth graders next year I can't believe we're already talking about scheduling for the high school for them. Uh, we would like for the, them to look at the program of studies because we offer lots of different courses here at the high school and use that flip grid. That was all mentioned on slide four. So please look through everything. Uh, for foreign language, you do not have to sign up the first year of a language your freshman year. It can actually wait till 10th grade. So it is a student by student decision on if you should start a foreign language next year. For the electives, we are asking that students choose six electives. Um, if they're really hoping to get something specific, there is a notes section at the end of the Google form for them to put any comments that they would like us to know about. You are not guaranteed any of the electives because we schedule all core courses in foreign language and graduation requirements first. So this just really is what is left over and what we can help fit into their schedule. We have lots of really great electives, so I'm sure whatever they get will be interesting and fun to learn about. For the music classes, at the on the Google form, you are just gonna click if you are interested in a year long choir, band, or orchestra course, we will then place you into the correct level. So you shouldn't have to worry about that. Now with the eighth to ninth grade scheduling, uh, in the month of February, you will hear from the middle school counselors and they will give you the plan on how they will be scheduling. All students will be scheduled by mid-March. And now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Snyder in terms of electives. Thank you, Mrs. Bunn. All right, I'm going to discuss the elective course options that we do have available through Coleraine High School. Um, Coleraine students have a great opportunity to choose from a wide variety of elective courses in all of our disciplines. So we can look at courses in English, we can look at courses in math, science, history, as well as a wide variety of the fine art courses and Butler Tech course offerings that are available. Now, once kids start out, usually ninth grade, there's a lot of courses that we try to get in for graduation requirements. So usually students have around two bells in their schedule that allow for some elective courses. We do like to fill those gym, get those requirements done, health, and begin our fine art. But this is also a really good time for students to start to think about some of their Butler Tech electives that are available so they can start exploring some of these areas. Um, as they move up in the grade levels, 10th grade is another opportunity to we really want the students to explore their Butler Tech options because this is the time that students will have to decide if they plan to apply for a Butler Tech program. Junior and senior year, class options really open up. Um, and this is where our students can take core credit areas for elective options. 
For example, if they're going into the healthcare field, um, there's a great opportunity to really get some of those science credits in there, taking anatomy and physiology, making sure chemistry is in their schedule or genetics. So lots of really great offerings for our kids and we want to make sure that they explore all those areas and all their interest levels so that they're well prepared for their post-secondary plans. Specific to Butler Tech, we offer um, a variety of different intro level courses and these are basic introductory classes to all the programs that are offered on our campus. Um, in ninth and 10th grade, we really encourage the students to take a look at these courses and if there's any of the programs that they're really thinking about that they might want to explore more or even apply to in 10th grade, we want them to take those intro courses in their ninth and 10th grade year just to make sure that's what they really want to do. Um, these are, classes are also open to our 11th and 12th grade students as well. Um, so but we just wanna make sure ninth and 10th grade, we really want you to get some of those Butler Tech electives in there. Um, there's several different recruitment opportunities that take place. And I know our sophomores this year have been through a lot of that. And we've had to do a lot of stuff online this year. Um, I know through the Google Classrooms, you had an opportunity to explore some of the different Butler Tech programs that are available on our Colerain High School campus, as well as the Northwest High School campus. Um, and the good news is, is we are still looking at taking applications for these programs. Um, you've heard a lot of us saying that January 31st is the deadline for Butler Tech. This is a priority deadline. So it, it's not a hard deadline. There are still plenty, um, plenty of time for you to get your applications in. And if students are planning to apply, please do so as soon as possible. You can apply um, on the Butler Tech website. You'll go to hsapplication.butlertech.org. If students have questions about any of the Butler Tech programs or the introductory classes that are offered on our campus, please reach out to your counselor. We'll tell you more about it. Um, and we, we can even introduce you to the teachers in those programs so you can get um, some of your questions answered and just some more information. Good evening. Um, I'm going to talk about the graduation requirements for the class of 2022. So the Ohio Department of Education has given us guidance on how students can graduate and earn their diplomas. There are several options that students have for earning a diploma. The first option for everyone is that students have to earn 20 credits in certain subject areas in order to be able to earn their diploma. So every student will cover the basis of um, earning their 20 credits in specified subjects and they will take a required test um, that will decide how they will round out their diploma requirements. One way is for students to show competency and their subject area classes, we call them end of course exams. So students will take tests in their end of course exams and those, those exams will determine their eligibility and competency in those areas. Another way students can earn their graduation requirement is through industry credentials. And many of our students who take Butler Tech programs in 11th and 12th grade have an opportunity to earn an industry credential. For example, students in our healthcare program will earn an STNA license. And as long as they meet those requirements, those students will have met the graduation requirement to be able to graduate with their industry credential. Another pathway is to show that you're ready is to earn a remediation free score on the ACT or the SAT. All of our juniors will have an opportunity to take the ACT in the spring. If they receive a remediation free score on that test, then they will be eligible in that area. Students who do not meet graduation requirements through testing will be able to show their competency by earning a industry credential of 12 points. They can enlist in the military or they can enroll in a college credit plus course and earn 
a passing grade to show their competency in that area. Students who choose the second option for graduation will also have to show their readiness by earning graduation seals. And those seals can be an Ohio Means Jobs Readiness Seal, an industry recognized credential, a college ready seal, a military enlistment seal, citizenship in science. In those areas, students will need to receive a competency score that is set by the state of Ohio in order to receive that. Students who earn an honors diploma can also receive a seal, the seal of biliteracy for students in foreign language, technolo a technology seal, and our local seals are community service, fine and performing arts and student engagement seals. Any of our local seals, students can earn one of those to make up their two seals that they need for graduation. Now guidance counselors can help in this area to allow students to know what seals they qualify for and how to earn them. The requirements for the class of 2023 are a little different. Um, they require some additional steps that we'll talk about. Again, students will have to earn their 20 credits in those required areas for their minimal graduation requirements. Their second step, they have three options. The first option again is to earn the 12 point credential. They may enlist in the military or they can earn college credit plus credits in order to meet that graduation requirement. And then in addition to the earning their graduation requirements, meeting those competencies, students will also need to earn one of the two um, must Ohio design seals, which would also include Ohio Meets Jobs Readiness Seal, the Industry Recognized Credential Seal, the College Ready Seal, the Military Enlistment Seal, the Citizenship Seal, the Science Seal, an Honors Diploma Seal, a Seal of Biliteracy, Technology Seal, a Community Service, or Fine Art and Student Engagement Seal. Now, guidance counselors will work with students in order to meet these requirements. We work with them um, from the time that they take their end of course exams up until the time of graduation. They have plenty of time to earn these credentials, and once they do, they will be ready for graduation. Um, I just want everyone to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Um, counselors are here to make every effort to make sure that students um, have an ideal schedule based on their course selections for next year. Please don't hesitate to contact us with any questions or concerns. Um, there are many factors that go into creating a student schedule, and we are happy to go over those things with you. Our first priority is getting students the classes that they need for graduation. Um, we also want our students to have a well-rounded schedule with electives and other things that will help make them a well-rounded student and just that will give them the best high school experience possible. Um, parents can always schedule individual meetings with us so that we can go over their students' requests and to talk about their schedules. We would like to thank you um, for joining us tonight, and please, please don't ever hesitate to contact us with any questions or concerns.